Hallelujah. The book of Psalms, Psalm 15. Also, you might want to uh, locate uh, James chapter 4. Psalm 15. Oh, I feel the presence. And I said, somebody said it last night. I'm glad I can feel the God I worship. Amen. Amen. I, I feel the presence of the Holy Ghost. That anointing. Uh, I couldn't make it without that anointing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Psalm 15, also James chapter 4. Reading the entire psalm, five verses. Psalm 15. Psalm 15, verse 1, and reading, Lord, who shall abide in thy tabernacle? And who shall dwell in thy holy heel? He that walketh uprightly and worketh righteousness and speaketh the truth in his heart. He that backbiteth not with his tongue, nor doeth evil to his neighbor, nor taketh up a reproach against his neighbor, in whose eyes a vile person is contemned. But he honoreth them that fear the Lord. He that sweareth to his own hurt and chargeth not. He that putteth not out his money to usury. Nor taketh reward against the innocent. He that doeth these things shall never be moved. Hallelujah. James 4 verse 8, 9, and 10. There are other verses in this chapter that we could read, but to, to expedite the time, we'll just read these three verses. Verse 8, draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. Cleanse your hands, ye sinners, and purify your hearts, ye double-minded. Be afflicted and mourn and weep. Let your laughter be turned to mourning and your joy to heaviness. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord and he shall lift you up. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord and he shall lift you up. That word shall is a powerful word. It is a moving word it is a word that's more strong than will but he said and he shall lift you up Amen. father we thank you for the word thank you for the testimonies of this people today lord of their faith in you god let your will be wrought among us and in us and through us today you receiving the glory and the praise and the honor lord we'll give you thanks for it all in Jesus' name and for Jesus' sake. And let everyone say, Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Hallelujah. Amen. Have you ever wondered what it must have been like when Enoch walked with God? Let you think on it. Have you ever wondered what it might be, might have been like when Noah walked with God? The Bible says of Enoch in the Hebrews chapter 11, he said that by faith Enoch walked with God. But also in that same verse, he said but he had this testimony that he pleased the Lord. He had this testimony that he pleased God. I want to say that again. He had this testimony that he pleased God. Now, are we pleasing the Lord? That's the big question. Are we pleasing God? In the scripture that I've read, 
he points out to us that there's a possibility, there's a potential of us being close with God. Amen. I want to speak today on a subject entitled, A Guest of God. A Guest of God. Amen. Hallelujah. My. Oh, hallelujah. I, I, I'm in his presence. How about you? <laughs> Glory. Hallelujah. Somebody praise him. Amen. I'm in his presence. Hallelujah. In the first verses of this Psalm 15, he poses two questions. And the two questions are simply this. Who shall abide in thy tabernacle? And who shall dwell in thy holy hill? Read that with me. Who shall abide in thy tabernacle? And who shall dwell in thy holy hill? Now the question is posed to God, to the Lord. And he is asking who is going to be uh, privileged or uh, uh, able or who is going to be allowed or permitted to abide and dwell with you, Lord. Amen. The meaning is simply this. Who is worthy to be God's guest? Who is worthy to be God's guest? Or who shall dwell in thy holy hill? Who may experience the intimate per perpetual and I use that word perpetual intentionally because it means permanently on and on and on. Hallelujah. And forever and forever. Praise God. And who may experience the intimacy, perpetual presence of the Almighty? Glory to God. It's not good enough to just start out, but it's better to keep on going. Amen. It's not good enough to spend a little while, but I want to live with Him forever. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The implication here is that we can personally know God's presence and actually and literally have fellowship with the great God of glory. Praise God. I believe it, don't you? Well, hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Well, hallelujah. Sometime I preach myself shouting happy. Amen. Glory to God. And sometimes uh, when I'm preaching at home, uh, I, I get shouting happy and they sit and watch me. And sometimes they join in with me. I don't know what you'll do today, but I want to be in the presence of the Lord of glory. Hallelujah. Amen. This psalm also, there's a negative side to this. It also supports the idea that we can cause God to withdraw from us, withdraw His presence by our actions, our attitudes, our speech, our lifestyles, our doubt, our lacking of prayer. Oh, yes, and spending time. I call it quality time with the Lord. Hallelujah. And without prayer there's no fellowship and there's no presence of the Lord in our lives. If anybody seems to be on the sideline uh, uh, wondering how all these others uh, are receiving blessing uh, and why and how all these others uh, are just excited and thrilled uh, and why others seem to be enjoying themselves uh, uh, in their testimony of the Lord. Uh, it could be uh, you haven't been alone with God. Uh, you haven't been in the closet long enough. Uh, you haven't been on your knees. Uh, you haven't had a talk with him lately. Uh, it'll help us. Uh, it'll help you. It'll help you. Hallelujah. Praise God. Not only do we invite the Lord, uh, but he invites us uh, into his presence. Glory to God. 
I've heard it said several times in this meeting already. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go up into the house of the Lord. Oh, praise God. Uh, there's, there's more to it uh, than just uh, coming in this building. Uh, amen. There's more to it uh, than sitting in a pew uh, or standing in a pulpit. Uh, hallelujah. Uh, it is uh, that I've come where God is. Uh, woo, hallelujah. I'm where the Lord is. Amen. Uh, praise God forever. Glory, somebody, let's wave. wave your hand and love him. Hallelujah. Well, glory to God. Well, there's no presence of the Lord without praise. Hallelujah. Praise the God. Woo, hallelujah. Praise God. Oh, did they call you? Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to his name. <laughs> Woo, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. I've just decided we're not in a hurry. <laughs> Woo, hallelujah. Well, glory. You know, I believe the Lord wants us to tarry. I believe the Lord wants us to wait. Amen. I believe the Lord wants us to, to stay a little longer. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Well, praise God. Woo, hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Just give me a little time to come back down. Oh, hallelujah. Hallelujah. You see? Oh, God is wanting us to dwell with him. He's wanting us to abide with him. <laughs> Amen. He wants us to spend our life with him. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 38. Very familiar scripture. He said, now, now, the just shall live by faith. But if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. He said, but the just shall live by faith. The just shall live by faith. Amen. I mean, you just can't get anywhere without believing and having faith. You just can't get very far spiritually without having faith and believing. You don't receive from the Lord without faith and believing. And the Bible said, and if any man draw back, he said, I have no pleasure in him. Now, don't we enjoy the Lord? Don't we love the Lord? Well, what about the other side of the coin? Don't you know that God loves you and me? Don't you know that God loves our fellowship with him also? Hallelujah. Amen. I like to get close enough till I feel like the Lord reaches out and shakes my spiritual hand. Amen. Hallelujah. I believe that's the reason we lift our hands. The psalmist said, I lift my hand unto the Lord. Hallelujah. I want to reach out to Him. Praise God. I want Him to take hold of my hand. Woo, hallelujah. You sung the right song, brother. I can't even walk without you holding my hand. Lord, I can't make it through the day without having some a fellowship with you, Lord. Praise God. Oh, hallelujah. Woo! <laughs> Woo! Hallelujah. Praise God. I love him. Don't you love him? Hallelujah. He loves us. And he wants us. Praise God. Woo! Hallelujah. <laughs> well, glory. Hallelujah. <laughs> what I gather from both of these scriptures, both in the old and in the New Testament, God is willing to draw near to us. Do you hear me? Sometimes we think and we feel that God is so far away. Did 
Anybody ever felt that way? We think sometimes we're all alone. Oh, Woo, hallelujah. He, well, how did it go, boys? Mm, hallelujah. Oh, he's rich. Glory. Rich in grace. Hallelujah. The riches of his grace. Praise God. Oh, let me tell you, the table spread today, friends. Praise God. Oh, uh, you remember that scripture, uh, Brother Roper over there where uh, the disciples, uh, then they saw Jesus over on the shore, uh, and he was cooking up some fish over there, and he said, come and die. Oh, come and dine, the master calleth. Come and dine. Amen, amen. Well, hallelujah. God is willing to dwell with us. He's willing to come near, nigh unto us. Praise God. Oh, hallelujah. It seems like we just see this human side, you know. We just see this earthly side. And, and oh, I've just got to get to God. I've just got to. Well, you've got to put forth the effort. Amen. And there's some responsibility laid on our shoulder. Amen. And God hasn't made us. Uh, he didn't tie a, a rope to us and drag us to him. No, but he does plead and he does call. Hallelujah. Woo, hallelujah. He is saying, come on. Come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Hallelujah. Come unto me. Come unto me, he said, and I'm going to give you rest. Woo, hallelujah. Anybody need that kind of rest? Oh, hear the call of God. Come to him, and he'll give you that rest. Uh, oh, we live in a wearisome world. Uh, we live in a stressful world. Uh, we live in a demanding world. Uh, we're living in a world uh, that is driving us to the very grave. Uh, oh, but let me tell you, friend, uh, uh, there's a call from the portals of glory. Uh, Say, come unto me. Uh, come unto me. Uh, come unto me. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Come unto me. Say it with me. Come unto me. You hear the Lord say it. Come unto me. I want to be a guest of the Lord. Hallelujah. Glory to God. He said, God is willing to draw nigh if we meet the conditions of his word. If we meet the conditions of his holy ordinance, uh, if we meet the conditions uh, of his covenant. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, glory. Woo, hallelujah. Somebody might say, well, I didn't realize that the Lord really wanted us that much. Yes, he does, friend. Why do you think Jesus died? Why do you think he shed his blood? It was so that he might reconcile us unto our Creator, that He might reconcile us to God. Woo, that's what He said, didn't He? That He might reconcile us uh, to our God, uh, to Jesus His Father, uh, that He would be our Father. Hallelujah. Woo, oh, praise God. Hallelujah. The same Lord that was here last night, He's here today. <laughs> Amen. He calls us to him. He wanted to reconcile us. Amen. You know what that word reconcile means? God help me to make it as simple as I can. Oh, hallelujah. It means that he wanted us to join partnership. Well, hallelujah. With the Father. Hallelujah. He wanted us to have a partnership with heaven, with God. Oh, hallelujah. You remember? Uh, uh, oh, oh, Peter thought he was so nice uh, and neat uh, that he wouldn't let Jesus wash his feet. But Jesus said, if I wash you not, you have no part with me. Woo, hallelujah. Got to get you cleaned up from head to toe. <laughs> Woo, hallelujah. And when, when Jesus put it across to him, uh, in those terms, he said, I'm ready to get a bath. 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Well, glory to the Lamb. Praise God. He said, I want you to have partnership. I want you to be in the same house. Amen. I want you to live with him. Praise God. You see, there in that verse 1 of Psalm 15, he said, Who shall abide? Who shall abide in thy tabernacle? But then he also said, And who shall dwell? You notice the change of words? Who shall dwell in thy holy hill? Abide. Hallelujah. You can abide and you can depart. But if you dwell, you just made it your headquarters. Amen. You made that your place of living. Amen. Hallelujah. You dwell up there in Virginia. Amen. You're just abiding here for a little while. Hey, whoo, hallelujah. But we're going to live with him. We're going to live with him. Praise God. And he, you know, the Bible teaches us here that the Lord wants to live with us and us with him. And, and I believe he delights to do so. I said he delights to do so. Amen. If we've met the conditions, it's his delight to do so. I tell people sometimes who are praying to receive the Holy Ghost. I tell them, and if there's anyone here to, today, you don't have the baptism of the Holy Ghost, I want to tell you. He's wanting you to have the baptism of the Holy Ghost more than you're asking. Hallelujah. Just throw that in. But he delights to be with us. Very much so. Revelation chapter 3 verse 20. Very familiar scripture. The Lord was talking to the church of Laodicea. Which is representing these last final days and hours of the church just before the rapture. But there in that verse 20, he said, Behold, I want your undivided attention. That's what he's saying. And I told you the other night, I don't know what service it was, might have been a morning service. I said, God is an individual God. He, 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 he works individually. As well as corporately. But, but here we find he said. Behold. I stand. At the door. And I knock. I stand at the door. And I knock. Who would stand at a door. And knock. Except that somebody. Who wants to come in. Right. Amen. And he said. Behold. I stand at the door. And knock. And if any man. Will open the door. I will come in to him and I will sup with him and he with me. Hallelujah. My. Oh, you can read that verse and just kind of scan over it and, and, and just kind of just read it through real quickly and you'll miss out on what the Lord is saying here. Uh, he said I'm standing at the door knocking. Uh, I want every one of you to hear me today. Uh, if you are not really right where God wants you, uh, He's knocking on your door. Amen. I said He's knocking on your door uh, and He's saying if any will open the door. I will come in to him and I will sup with him and he with me. Oh, I've studied that scripture, read that scripture, preached on that scripture, taught on that scripture time and time again down through the years, Brother Joy. 
But as I was studying and preparing for this message, that one little three-letter word, it just leaked out to me as the key word in that whole verse. And it, and it is S-U-P. Sup. Oh, hallelujah. He said, if you'll open the door, I'll come in to you, and I will sup with you, and you can sup with me. Hallelujah. I began to dig into that word sup. I found out it's mighty big to be a little three-letter word. It said, I will come in and I will feast. I will take the principal meal. I'll take the super supper. I'll take the chief supper with you. Hallelujah. You talking about a feast time. You talking about a glorious meal. You talking about a satisfying portion. Hallelujah. He is saying, if you'll open the door, I'll come in and we'll sit at the same table. We'll eat together. We'll chat together. We'll fellowship together. We'll have some time together. And we'll rejoice together. Hallelujah. Somebody praise him. Hallelujah. Woo! Hallelujah. Glory to God. We're going to have a feast time with the Lord. Amen. Praise God. We don't have to settle for just a little crumbs. We don't have to settle for the dry, stale bread. It's always fresh. Hallelujah. Every morning. Amen. And every noontime. And every evening. He is supplying the very royalties of glory. The delicacies of heaven, if you please. Well, praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise God. If I, if I was sitting in a house uh, uh, with this kind of atmosphere and this kind of uh, uh, praise and worship uh, uh, going on, uh, if I didn't have uh, uh, what the, the Scripture's teaching us, uh, I wouldn't wait till the preacher got through. Uh, I'd run to the altar. Uh, hallelujah. I'd get on my knees and crawl down to the altar. Uh, I'd be praying to God, uh, Lord, I want to have what he's preaching about. Uh, I want to have what the Bible says I can have. Uh, I want to have what you're offering, Lord. Uh, I want to sit with you. Uh, I want to dine with you. Uh, I want to fellowship with you. Uh, I want to rejoice with you. Uh, I want to weep with you, Lord. Uh, praise God. Hallelujah. Woo! Hallelujah. Glory to God for that. Hallelujah. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Woo! <laughs> mm, hallelujah. I'm going to have to finish up here and move on. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The Lord has it all bread. Praise God. He's our bread. When we're hungry. He's our drink. When we're thirsty. <laughs> Woo. And do you know he has the desserts to go with it? Praise God. Hallelujah. My, my. Don't have time to tell you it all. Up. My wife told me some years ago. You don't have to preach everything you know. Well, I don't know much. <laughs> Hallelujah. All I know is what the Lord tells me. Praise God, he teaches me. <laughs> Hallelujah. But all I tell you, I love fellowshipping with him. I love sitting at his table. I like to dine with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Hallelujah. <laughs> Amen. Anybody here love to dine with him? Oh, isn't it glorious and beautiful? Hallelujah. His holiness in the presence of the holy God. Wow. Wow. <laughs> That's about the only way I can describe that. Wow. Amen. In the presence of the holy God.
People scrambled all over each other, trampled on each other. People have actually died under the feet of others trying to get to some celebrity or some human personality and didn't didn't really receive anything when they did. But oh, I tell you, you can just come into the presence of the Almighty God. Hallelujah. Amen. <laughs> and it's safe. I said it's safe. It's cordial. It's warm. Hallelujah. It's blessed. Praise God, just to dwell in His presence. Praise the name of Jesus. Verses 2 through 5 of Psalm 15 provide a list of recommendations. And if they're followed precisely to the perfection, will make an inviting place for God's presence. I don't have time to preach them all. If I preached all of this, would you, Brother Gaines, he wouldn't get to. But I want to tell you, the Christian principle is more than what Christian profession is talking about divine supernatural sovereign truths teach us how to make an inviting house for the Lord Amen. How that we can enter into His presence. We enter into His presence with praise and with thanksgiving. That's what the Bible says. They enter into His courts with praise, with thanksgiving. Hallelujah. And I believe when we enter in that way, He's going to meet us. He's going to meet us. Hallelujah. Thank God. Jesus prayed a prayer. John 17. I'm not going to go into all of it. But he prayed there. And he said, Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. He said, That's the way. To prepare a place for the Lord to come and abide and dwell. Hallelujah. If I had the time, I'd just preach it all. And if the Lord wanted me to, but I sense the Spirit of the Lord, you know, drawing the line back. Praise God. But I'm going to tell you, this is real. This is real. You can... You can have this wonderful pleasure. And the Lord will have pleasure in us. That we come and dwell together with the Lord. The Bible said if you walk in the light. As he is in the light. You'll have fellowship. One with another. You'll have fellowship with the Lord. And he with you. If we walk in the light, we walk in the light. The light is Jesus Christ. The light is the word of God. And the light is the holiness of God. Amen. You walk in the light as he is in the light. You'll have fellowship one with another. Does anyone want to come to the Lord? Stand please.